What's going on, guys? Well, that that was it. You saw all our playbooks, and so that's all we got to <laughs> offer. Huh? Yeah, you guys. That, that's uh, that's all we have in our in our uh, repertoire. So, um, you know, we'll be ready next week and uh, excited about the game. No, it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, wanted to be clean. There's obviously some mistakes, and but I think for the most part, the ones were pretty clean. Uh, had uh, some issues with the twos and threes, but uh, I mean, I, th I think that's kind of expected in in this type of setting. So uh, I'll take any questions. Francis Bernard, the announcement that he was going to redshirt. Just how mm -hmm. does the defense now move forward, and just what do you look, kind of look to from the, the other linebackers? Well, we have, um, you know, we, we have. I, I think we've got a lot of guys that can play there. We've we've worked with Adam Pulsifer there. Kuj Tapaso has been there, and we've had uh, Matt Hadley move there a little bit and play. I mean. Hadley can play a lot of different positions. He's got so much athleticism. Uh, we, we tried him at running back a little bit, and he got, um, I think he got injured, and so it kind of stopped his progress there. But, um, you know, he's a returner. But I think, I think he's struggling with keeping the weight off, and so it just makes sense to let him eat freely and get big and play linebacker. I mean, that's kind of like my motto. So, you know, you know why, why not let our players do it? So, that, yeah, I think we'll, there's plenty of players there that, that can fit. I think Isaiah Kafusi's come along really well. and. Depending on how Will Sedgwick and, and, and uh, Christian Folau come along, I think we'll be good. Morgan Unga is coming along too as, as, a, as, a, as a linebacker. So I think we're, there's enough bodies, just got to get enough playing time and get them ready in that position specifically. Were you guys prepared for this, kind of working other guys in? Did you know kind of maybe that it was kind well, of... Well, I mean, I, I shouldn't say we should be prepared for everything, but there's always got to be a plan and try to develop depth, you know. So, um, uh, you know, we've had some, uh, some, some injuries. There's always something that adds to the game that you have to uh, rely on depth, and that's what we're trying to do is establish more depth in our program, and uh, this is just one of those moments. Offensively, Ty's saying there isn't really a pure depth chart. It depends on what package, what formation you want to be in. Do you feel comfortable with playmakers and difference makers? Because usually when you have those guys, they tend to be on the field no matter what. Yeah, I think we got, there's a lot of playmakers in the different type of body types, and you know, so whether we have a slot receiver out there or Matt Bushman or Moroni, um, it all depends on on what we see and where we think we can match up best. And so, I think it's just it's hard to put in one statement, and, and uh, maybe Ty tried, I don't know, but uh, for us, uh, the goal is to win games and to get mismatches, and uh, we think we can, we have some of that depending on on the uh, opponent. So the focus is on Portland State. And trying to win that game and, and preparing for that opponent first. You were a coordinator. How difficult was it to defend an offense that had a tight end who could move around and get downfield? Oh, really hard. I mean, we, we want to get some great ones. You know, I think uh, Dennis Pitta comes to mind, Andrew George. There's a lot of great ones that we, we had to defend. And um, it's difficult when you have a guy that's that big. He's a big target and, and can move really well. So um, the tight end's a mismatch, but there's always a good change up where you can put receivers at different places. I mean, we have some explosive guys on, on offense. and. Whether they're in, in the running back position or receiver, I mean, you, you see what Bo Tanner and Jonah Trinneman and th those guys can do, and Micah Simon and Oliva Hefo. So there's a lot of guys, but only 11 can be on the field at one time, and so we we're going to try to utilize as much as we can to help us win games and get and develop mismatches on the field. How much does this come down to Tanner needs to be the guy who really makes mismatches happen and makes big plays happen with his ability to read what's happening on the field? Definitely, and and he's got a great coach, and and I think that the way he's progressed, I've been really excited about his uh, just understanding the offense and understanding different spots and, and what he sees from the defense and then taking what, we, what he can get you know and I think he's making wise decisions now and it's a uh, you know he's got another nine days to prepare for it but um, I, I've been really pleased with how much he's matured in the quarterback position but also as a leader. Even if he were to match the production he had two years ago, is he going to have to do it differently? It's going to look different than the way he played then. Yeah, I think I think it, well, he's a little older, but I think we have different pieces to, to what he had to deal with and two years ago, you know, and it's a different system. But I think what Ty has done with the offensive staff has established a lot of different ways to attack a defense, and uh, we'll see what fits best for each week. I I don't think we're going to be the same way every week. I think I think we're going to utilize different spots, but we've been preparing for this since you know since spring. And so we, we kind of know what, what our identity is going to be, and uh, we'll work on that. And, and I think that it's coming along really well right now. As a defensive guy, how often did you look at the personnel and use that to anticipate what the offense was about to do? And how much do you worry about tipping your hand here with the personnel groups? Well, uh, the goal is to get some tendencies and, and have people look at it and then maybe switch them up. So who knows? Uh, um, it's, a, it's a game where it comes down to the players make the plays and they win games. And there's sometimes a, there's a, there's – you can cover as well as you can, but a quarterback makes a great throw, receiver makes a great catch, and there's not much you can do about it if everything's clicking on all cylinders.
you guys are replacing those two inside defensive tackles. How how comfortable do you feel with the guys, the rotation you got in there? Oh, really good. I, th I think that, um, you know, with with Handsome and Kesney and, and Kyrus, um, I, I know I feel good about that group. I, I, I feel good about Lorenzo coming on as a freshman. Solo has done a great job. So there's a lot of bodies there that, and, and, and Coach Tuyaki's done a great job with that D-line. So I feel really comfortable with the D-tackle position. I don't think that's going to be a problem for us. What is it about Kyrus that you just really, really enjoy watching him play? Well, have you met him? He's a monster. So he's big, and that helps, you know, and the size, and he's athletic. And so, um, you know, I don't want to put too much on someone, but um, their job is to just disrupt and own the trenches. And so uh, it's not a, a flashy job and probably doesn't get a lot of stats, but... Uh, they're going to do the dirty work and, and uh, allow our guys to make plays in the backfield and as linebacking and, and as linebackers and safety. So um, I think he's he's up for the task, and, and and I know that for the other D tackles, they're ready for, to show that they can do some stuff. How many D lines <coughs> do you really have confidence in right now that you can put them in with this tough schedule you're going to face in September and know they can do it? I, I think we definitely have two deep, and and some places we have more than that. I mean, defensive end we feel good about Corbin and Sione, but Trajan's done a great job coming along. We have. Um, you know, Rhett Sandlin's there. Longy Tuifu has done a great job as a freshman. So, and then Uriah's there too. So, there's, I just named six DNs that they can play, and I think we have just as many D tackles. So, uh, we feel really good about a solid two deep, and maybe possibly three in some spots. So, Francis, can he still contribute on scout team? Oh, what's the plan for him? Just this coming? Yeah, up? just basically what what we said on the release. So, I know you have to ask the questions, but I'm not going to go into specifics on everything. But he'll be, but what it said in the release that he'll be with the team and he'll be practicing with us. The freshman IU uh, at safety, do you, do you see him having a role? On oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that we've, we've tried a, a few things with him, too, and he's a great athlete. I, we wouldn't have um, tried Hadley at linebacker in different places if we didn't feel great about the, the depth of safety, you know. And I think he has he's added a lot to that group. He's just a freshman, but he's um, really good, and um, that I've been really pleased with the way that, that group has come along in, in camp. And, you know, they're going to be – I think we're gonna be fine in that in that position. We we do some things where we add more DBs to the on the field depending on personnel as well. So he he can he can fit, uh, kind of fill in in those spots as well.